Hi everyone, this is Christoph from Energy and Climate Systems 3 and in this video I'm going to show you how to use Hive for uh, calculating PV electricity generation of your building designs. So for this exercise um, open the file Hive Active Solar which you can find on Moodle. Actually also make sure that before you open this file you need to install the latest update of Hive uh, which we will also um, tell you in a, a separate mail. So once you've updated Hive, um, open Active Solar. And once it's loaded, you will see that it looks um, rather similar. The major difference now is that on the left hand side here where the, where the inputs are, you will now find a third component which is for energy systems. So um, in this component things like uh, conversion technologies are set or emission systems but also PV uh, panels. And this uh, component is also going into this uh, simulation core and um, yeah, the rest you don't really have to um, worry about. It is important that you use this new file because in the simulation core, if you go again over to the right, we've added some new components um, that are for, for the energy systems and for the PVs. So you can't use the old uh, file from the previous exercise, you have to use the newest one. Okay, so if you now focus your attention on uh, this input component, um, what you will see here is that um, it connects to a mesh component and this mesh component represents your PV surface. So it's important that the inputs for this uh, energy systems or for this PV um, uh, component are mesh geometries. So it needs mesh geometries for your PV panels. Of course, you can also start by modeling in, in Rhino, modeling a, a surface, a NURBS surface geometry, and then converting that into a mesh. And following the same logic as you had for your um, windows, it needs this, the discretization of the surface into, into uh, mesh vertices so it knows on how many points it calculates um, the solar potentials or the solar irradiation. So if we look at that in, in Rhino directly in the viewport, so if this is our, our building design and this is our PV panel, if you bake this component here, you see um, I put this uh, U and V discretization to 6, so you have six uh, faces in each direction and this might be too much uh, or not yeah depending on how fine you want to have it um, discretized you can change this number um, also what i should mention is that uh, unlike the windows geometries that always have to be on the on the building um, on the building surfaces so like these windows they have to be on the on the facades. The PV panels they don't have to be on the building. Like you could also have, you could actually also have um, a surface here next to the building or really anywhere. Um, it could also be um, it, it could actually also be curved surface. So um, let's make that as an example. Uh, So let's make a curve like this, or no, like this, and then let's flip this around. Something like this, let's say. Um, again, surface normals are important to consider, so so it knows where uh, where it's facing to. In this case, it sh uh, should face upwards, of course. All right, so this surface could also work. So you can now replace um, this component, or we can actually, let's make a new one. Surface set. And then you can put this into here. And now this should work. If you dis if you if you bake the mesh, you will find the discretized version of this. 
So on each of these nodes, solar irradiation will be simulated. Okay, um, also you can have more than one surface. This might be important if you, let's say you want to have a PV panel here and then one, one here next to your building or, or somewhere else. Then you just connect several into, into this component. So it could be either that you provide uh, surfaces, NURB surfaces, or you also could, let's say this was, if this already was a mesh, um, let's bake this guy. And then we know we don't need this anymore. So you have this surface that you want to provide into your component, and then you have a mesh surface, a separate one, this one. Then we say select mesh. And this one, since it's already a mesh, it connects directly to the component. So the NURBS surface first has to be converted to a mesh, but this one is already a mesh, so we can put this in here. Um, hold shift, and then you can put several inputs into this component. Okay, so once you've decided on your surfaces that you want to have for PV, um, you can double click on this um, energy systems component and a form will pop up. Um, now you will find in the conversion tab, you will find conversion technologies that are important to provide uh, or that, uh, that are needed to supply um, the energy loads of the building. So. Um, as a preparation, we already provided chiller and an air source heat pump here, and um, you should not change these two technologies. So that's not really part of the exercise, but you will look at the PV panels. Actually, here's solar thermal and the PV already inside this template, so you can you can go ahead and delete these to just start uh, with uh, zero. And now if you want to add a new PV panel, the only thing you have to do is click on an empty row, click again, and then uh, this drop-down menu will will appear, and if you click on here, you can change, you can select the technology that you want to have. And since in this exercise it's about PV, um, go ahead and select the PV panel. Now, uh, if you click on this PV technology, you will find a list here of available surfaces, and those correspond to the surfaces that you have um, input into this component. And since we put two surfaces in, like one surface and the mesh you will find two items here. And the order of these two items correspond to the order that you have um, uh, plugged these things into this component. So I think we plugged in the NURBS surface, this one first. So this should be surface zero. And this one we plugged in second. And then I think this should, one should be the second item. You can also see the area of the surface and then by that um, try to understand which one this switch surface. Uh, they're almost identical, so it's hard to tell. But I think this one is surface second, surface two, so surface one, sorry, surface zero, surface one. All right, now let's say you want to um, make both of these PV panels uh, into a monocrystalline uh, PV technology. Then you can, in this uh, drop down, you can select the technology. And here you would find a little description of the technology. And also you would find here that the efficiencies change and these are according to our latest database. And um, actually right now you can't really change these numbers, but it is important that you select the right technology in the right context. So let's say since we have a curved surface here, we can't really use um, polycrystalline modules since they can't be bent. So in this case we would go for a um, CIGS or a CDT. Um, Right, so you select both surfaces by just clicking on them and on this list and you will find that they are highlighted. And if they're highlighted, then you know they are selected. Right, and once you've made your selections, you can close this form again. And the uh, visualizer should update accordingly. Now by default, the simulation is set to false to save computing time. But of course, in this context, you should simulate solar radiation because of all the obstructions um, that are around here. 
Let's see, click here on true. And you will see here how the solar simulator uh, assesses PV potentials. Okay, so now you see that it worked because you see some color gradients here. Uh, again, these color gradients correspond, as in the previous exercise, to these minimum and maximum values that, that you can change here. So if you want to set this number differently, then you see the color scale changing. All right. And you can also see that the, um, the grid electricity demand actually changes if you have PV uh, provided to your building. And in fact, in summer, with an, with an overproduction, because we generate more electricity in the summer month than we actually consume. Right, the PV generation, the monthly PV generation, is also provided in this, um, in this panel on the bottom. So here it says PV electricity generation for each of these services individually on a month monthly basis in kilowatt hours. Uh, but it's important to know that the demand curves, they still correspond to, to the building energy demands. So now that uh, this electricity demand curve, it includes the um, electricity demand for your appliances, for your equipment, for lighting and so on, but also the electricity demand that you have for your heat pump and for your chiller. So the cooling demands and the heating demands, they are always covered by your um, by your energy systems, but you need to know that your electricity demands now they also include the operation of these um, these this heat pump and this chiller, uh, and also of course of your PV, which is why in summer you have this overproduction because you don't need all this electricity actually. Also, if you change the plots here um, by clicking on these things, um, you will find the Sankey diagram again. That and, and, and now you have um, an arrow. On the left hand side for renewable energy because now you generate renewable energy with your PV panels. And in outgoing arrows you will find data for surplus electricity, so that electricity that you don't consume yourself, um, and also for active cooling. And in this case it's not so much because we are actually in, well, San Francisco. Right. And the rest is, should be more or less the same. Um, okay, and I think this concludes. No, wait, one more thing. So let's say you wanna um, you wanna make you wanna use two different technologies, two different PV technologies. So the way you would do that. Uh, okay, so when you change stuff, it's always good to disable the simulation core. Just that. It doesn't update again once you make one little change. So disable, right click, and disable. And now let's change, let's make this curved surface to a, um, to a thin film PV and the, this panel, let's make that to a monocrystalline uh, panel. So we can do that by again opening up that um, form with a double click and uh, unassign one of these surfaces, or you can also unassign both and start from zero. And um, let's start with the monocrystalline and um, assign only one, one of these two available surfaces to uh, poly polycrystalline. Ah, monocrystalline is better. Monocrystalline. So you click on here and then you see that surface zero is selected. Now let's make a new PV by double clicking on an empty row. Change this to um, yeah, CDT. And then now you will find that this list only has one, one surface available. And that is because the other surface, surface zero, was already assigned to um, was already assigned to here. So here you see it's selected. And this one is the only available surface that you can still select for this new PV. And then you just go here and click on it. And you will find it's highlighted. And that's it. Now you can close it again. Uh, enable your simulation core, so right click, or left click selected and then right click somewhere where it's um, on an empty space and then click on enable. And then you will see that the simulation starts again. Mm -hmm. 
And once that's done, you find your updated graphs with two different PV technologies. Okay, and that's how you simulate PV electricity yields of your building integrated photovoltaics.